Hi, good day all of you. Welcome to our session. Welcome to our channel Intelligible Tutorials. In this today's session, no, I want to give the clear introduction of the domains and paths. So uh, by means we are discussing about the domain testing. Okay, so what is the meaning of the domain testing? Normally in the mathematics, we are having domain and range in the functions while we are working with the functions. So what is a domain and what is a range in the nor normal mathematics? Uh, we have already know what is a domain and what is a range. For example, f of 1 comma 1. So one can be regarded as the domain and second one can be re regarded as the range. So that is the domain and range. How the domain can be represented actually? Actually this the domain is also one kind of variable and as well as range is also one kind of the variable. Domain is a set of possible values of the independent value uh, or the variables of the function. So how many number of the possibility of the values are there for a function that can be regarded as a domain. So it may be one, sometimes it may be two, three, whatever it is, so, so, so. Okay. So next programs as input data classifiers whatever data we will give input uh, it can classify the data and it can take the input domain testing is a find of the testing phenomena that attempts to determine whether the whatever classification that is taking for the program inputs is correct or not in the domain testing we can specify that whatever input data we are classifying for the input to the program is directly correct or not that is nothing but the domain testing okay so the next one the domain testing is completely based on the specifications or equivalent information equivalent implementation of the information so we have some specifications based on the specifications only the domain testing will work so next what are the domains and what are the paths okay all inputs to a program can be considered as if they are numbers okay for example for example the program will take only the numerical data so whatever inputs that can be considered as if they are numbers okay for example a character string can be treated as a number by concatenating and looking at them as if they were a binary integer this is the view of domain testing which is why the strategy has a mathematical flavor okay for example whatever character string we are having suppose ab01 can be treated as a number by concatenating bits and uh, looking at them if they were a binary integer which, which example i told as ab01 ab is a character string and i have uh, concatenated it for the 01 it's a binary integer actually 0 is a binary and 1 is a binary so we can conclude it as a number okay so in this view of the domain we can classify it it as a number even it is a character string we can classify it as an integer right so like this uh, see such kind of the examples are allowed as the inputs like uh, bc01 or bc10 like that so many number of the examples are there where the character inputs are given as the concatenated with the binary numbers and they can be given as the input numbers in this this is nothing but the domain testing which is why the strategy having some mathematical flavor why because this was taken from the mathematical functions so that's why it can have the mathematical flavor okay so next domains and paths here the input is clearly specified here see let us see this is the input here we are having and next we can classify that particular input according to some set of the cases and then output will be generated by default all the cases it is connected to like case 1 case 2 up to case n okay so all the paths finally leads to what directly the output okay so like it can all the data can be classified by the set of the cases up to n and all the cases can leads to the output okay so now what is a domain actually it's a set of possible numbers now already we have discussed so the set of possible numbers we can call it as a set domain set easily okay so that's why a domain and the input domain is a set of possible values so it can be regarded as a test set okay so next one if the source language supports set of definitions less uh, testing is needed because the compiler does much for it for it for us okay because in the programming languages itself allow some certain number of the restrictions on the data types like variables of the data types like integer only allow integer and uh, character only arrow character and float only allow 
float the compiler itself makes some restrictions on the data like uh, this kind of the data type is allowed this type of the data type is allowed so at the compile time itself we are reducing the work of the separating of the data so only compile we need not do at the testing time like integer only taking the input value or not float is taking float value or not uh, like that so compiler itself uh, we are assigning the values at the compile time compiler itself checks whether the value is correct or not okay we need not test again for the data types and the variables okay and domain testing does not work well with the arbitrary discrete set of the object value data objects okay so whenever we combine multiple data in the form of the objects then this domain testing won't work well and it won't suit well for such a combinational things okay Domain testing is a loop-free program and it is a loop-free testing corresponds to a set of numbers defined over the input vector. There are no loops in the domain testing. We have to remember this blindly because uh, it corresponding to only some set of the numbers but not on the working on the loops and all these things uh, like predicates uh, set of the loops and all these things. Only the range of the numbers, uh, sorry, only the set of the numbers, set of the possible numbers only defined over the input vector. Next. We are talking about the domains, paths and predicates. What is a domain we know? What is a path we know? What is a predicate we know? Once again, we see these three terminology, these three terms in the context of uh, this particular domain testing. Okay. So, the domain testing predicates are assumed to be interpreted in terms of input vector variables. So, what are the predicate actually? A predicate is a function that can check uh, either true or false value and returns any one value either true or false based on some set of the input vector variables. If the input vector matches, it returns predicate returns true value or else the predicate returns false value. Okay. If domain testing is applied to a structure, then predicate interpretation must be based on actual paths through the routine that is based on implementation of the control flow graph. Whenever we have applied this domain testing to a structure, then predicate interpretation must be based on the actual paths, then based on the implementation of control flow graph. Whenever to a program structure we have applied, definitely that particular program structure can have some set of the in, some set of the predicates and all these things. Then whenever you are working with the predicates, what we require, whenever we are going to represent the program structure having predicates and all these things, what is the best representation of the program? Obviously the control flow graph, right? This control flow graph contains, contains what? Some set of the nodes, predicate nodes and all these things. Okay, so whenever you are working on that such kind of the structure, you have to implement it on the control flow graph first. Then only you can do the domain testing. That's what it is saying. Okay. Next, domain closer. What is the meaning of the domain closer? A domain is opened whenever it is going to be worked. Okay, so uh, the domain is closed whenever those values are not shared by other kind of the domains. A domain boundary is closed with respect to the domain if the points of the boundary belongs to the other domain. Okay, so continuation points will be there, those belongs to other domain, then it can have some end, then that is called as the closed domain. Okay, so if the boundary points belongs to some other domain, uh, then the boundary is said to be open even these points are also not closed and these points are also sharing by other kind of the domain also so such kind of the uh, situations we can call it as the open domain pictorically we will see what is the domain closed domain and what is open domain let us have a look on this picture okay so in this picture we are having dimension domain 1 domain 2 and domain 3 in a straight line we are representing three number of the domains number 1 is domain 1 okay number 2 is domain 2 okay and number 3 is domain 3 this one okay so next here both sides are closed these variables are belongs to this domain whatever variables that lies on this particular line close between these two closed is called as the d2 domain but whenever it's not closed the variables of this is shared by these this domain and the variables of these are shared by this particular domain such kind of the situations domain d2 is the open domain in this case domain d2 is the closed domain in this case it is treated as the 
open domain okay now coming to the d1 okay so in the previous two cases it is previously closed domain d1 is the closed and uh, here also this case case number 2 it is also closed but now coming to the case number 3 domain is open domain why because there is no closes existing between uh, domain 1 and domain 2 and domain 3 so all the domains are open domains here starting from d1 like that the variables are shared whenever the domains are opened the variables are not shared by the other domains whenever the domains are closed like this you can easily understand the open domains and closed domains in a domain line okay this line is called as the entire domain line or the set of all the possible values starting from 0 to n okay so the starting value of this domain is nothing but 0 and the large value of this domain is nothing but n in between 0 to n the domains are shared the set of all possible values right okay next we are going to see what is domain dimensionality okay so we will see what is the domain dimensionality now every input variable adds one value one dimension to the domain okay so one variable defines the domain as a number line two variable defines the planar domains three variable defines the solid domains okay so every new predicate slices through to slice means what a part of the program slices through previously defined domains and cuts them in half whatever predicate is there that can be shared by all the domains and it cuts through the previously domains and cuts them in the half so each and every input variable adds to one domain one variable defines domains on the number line two variable defines planar domains and three variable defines the solid domains okay so every new predicate slices through previously defined domains and cut them in the half because the slice means it's a part of the or part of the program like uh, how bread slices you can cut in the same manner okay so this is the domain dimensionality okay next we are going to talk about what are the various kinds of the domain errors okay so there are uh, multiple number of the domain errors we discuss one by one now okay so double zero representation the very first one what is the meaning of this double zero representation okay so normally in the computers or the programming languages we have a distinct positive and negative zero boundary errors for negative zero are also common so whenever you represent double zero representation that is also a domain error okay like this zero and zero zero follows by another zero okay that is the zero double zero representation the next one floating point zero check okay so floating point number whatever it is that equal to zero only if the previous definition of the number is set to zero if it is subtracted from itself to multiplied or zero so the floating point zero check can be done against an epsilon value what is the floating point normally the floating point values are also will be there we have to check the floating point numbers also normally a floating point number also can also be equal to zero suppose we have the value of zero point uh, some zero point zero 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 and uh, some four zeros after you are having some one seven six like that this number can also be called as the floating point number directly equals to zero but uh, if the previous definition of the number is set to 0, if it is subtracted from other number or if it is subtracted from itself or multiplied by 0. So, the floating point 0 checked to be done against the epsilon value. We have to take care of such kind of the values also by floating point 0 check numbers. The next one is contradictory domains. What are the contradictory domains? An implementation domain, whatever domain that you are going to implement that never be ambiguous or ununderstanding or contradictory but a specific dom but should be a specific domain okay so a contradictory domain specification means that at least two oh, supposedly distinct domains overlap that means whenever one domain is overlapping on another domain then such kind of the domains are called as contradictory domains okay so domain cannot be a contradictory it should be normal domain only okay it should not be overlap with another domain then such situation is called as a error situation so what are the first three error situations number one double zero representation it is the number one so it is also one kind of the error the representation of the double zero and second one is floating point zero check and third one is contradictory domains domain should not overlap on each other okay 
next domain errors what are the domain errors normally so uh, other kind of the domain what sorry the second case of the domain errors now other domain errors now we are going to see the ambiguous domains so what are the ambiguous domains some domains are not clear not understandable such kind of the domains are called ambiguous domains ambiguous means the union of the domains are incomplete domains not completely defined domains that means some of the domains are missing and some of the holes are there on the domains and uh, there is no clear specification of what points are to be there on the domain boundary and some points are missing on the domain such kind of the domains are treated as the ambiguous domains ambiguous domains are highly error prone situations okay so incomplete holes inconsistent and uh, not existent domains are called as the ambiguous domains next one is over specified domains so what are the over specified domains okay so it can be overloaded with so many conditions that the result is a null domain another way to put it is to say that domain path is inachievable that means whatever domain that you are going to implement whatever domain that you are going to work it is full of set of conditions okay finally it is resulting a null okay so another one is the path we have specified for a domain that is not at all achievable path okay so that's why it is it is it is saying that path unachievable okay and null domain and multiple conditions are existing on the domains such kind of the domains are called as over specified domains these over specified domains are also caused the errorness situations like uh, ambiguous domains okay the next one is boundary errors so what are the boundary errors now here we are going to see errors caused in and around the boundary boundary of a domain we are having some errors in the domain or on the domain or within the domain such kind of the domains are boundary errors <coughs> example of such boundary errors are boundary closure bug shifted boundaries tilted boundaries missing boundaries and extra boundaries what are these boundary errors now we are going to see in the coming videos okay so next some more domain errors that we are going to see okay the one is closure reversal what is a closure reversal actually it's a common bug the predicate is defined in terms of greater than or equal to and the programmer chooses to implement the logical complement and incorrectly uses of lesser than or equal to new predicate okay so we have to take very uh, we have to work very carefully with the help of this relational operators especially the greater than and as well as the lesser than and greater than or equal to and as well as the lesser than or equal to okay so greater than or equal to if we incorrectly we have used this greater than or equal to then there are some significant boundary values to adjacent domain some other kind of mismatches will be there in the uses of this uh, incorrect uses of this greater than and lesser than some negative values uh, will be will, will also be the come okay so that's why closure reversal should be clear and clearly specified the next one is faulty logic what is the faulty logic compound predicates are subjected to faulty logic the logic in the fa the faults in the logic the errors in the logic such situations are called as faulty logic compound predicates normally multiple number of the predicates will conjoint with each other conjunct with each other these compound predicates are subjected to some faulty logic transformations and improper simplification when faulty logic is normally existing whenever we are working with two or more logical expressions in one predicate such kind of the predicate is called as compound predicate okay so compound predicate is one of the best uh, example of the faulty logic so one of the error in a situation of the faulty logic okay if the predicates define domain boundaries and uh, all kinds of the domain bugs can result from faulty logic manipulations so whatever predicates are there define in domain boundaries all the kinds of domain bugs can result from this faulty logic manipulations okay so predicates uh, having some domain boundaries and it contains some set of the domain bugs can result from faulty logic manipulations so these are some set of the domain errors like double zero representation floating point zero check contradictory domains or overlapped domains and next ambiguous domains and next over specified domains and boundary errors and closure reversal and faulty logic these are the various kinds of the domain errors normally we can have okay these are the domain dimensionalities and this is domain closure open and closed domains all these things 
okay so uh, we stop for here itself and the next uh, video we are going to discuss about the restrictions to domain testing okay so thank you for watching thank you one and all